So I guess the most important question, are you wearing the the U.S. Women's National Team every game now? It seemed like good luck yesterday. Yeah. Um, no, we'll wait till the next game, then I'll put it on. But uh, I, it, was, it was a pretty impressive uh, performance yesterday. You also have been um, outspoken about equal pay and, and those types of things. Why, why, do the, why is that so important to you? Well, you know, having... Uh, having had a wife that coached collegiately and professionally and, and a daughter that played collegiately, you, you know, you just you just hope everybody gets equal opportunity. I mean, you know, we're here with Jennifer King, and, and she's done a tremendous job for us. You know, we, we've hired a, a nutritionist that just happens to be a woman. We, we, we hired a, um, a player wellness uh, director, and she just happens to be a woman, obviously. So I, I just think that it, 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 it's, it's time. I mean, we're in a situation where we're, we're in a game that's very popular and it's watched by everybody, and so it should be coached. And and managed by everybody. Ron, to, to that point, I mean, you, you do represent the NFL. I mean, you do have that powerful voice. Yep. And how much more significant is it when someone like you speaks out <laughs> has that kind of weight behind it. Well, I mean, I, I'm fortunate enough that I do have a platform and, and, and I'm just helping to, you know, just draw attention. I mean, if you really want to watch it, all you got to do is watch the way that the women prepare, the, how hard the women do things. You know, they, they, they're, they're meticulous at what they do, uh, the way they, they play on the field, the way they perform. I mean, it, it speaks for itself. And, and you know, and, and like I said, we're fortunate. We have a young lady named Jennifer King who's, who's done some really good things. She's learning. She's growing. Um, and and it, I think it's I think it's great. I really do. What would you say to people who complain about running up the score? That's that's you know that's just it though. I mean it, it's hard not to because you got a group of, of people that are, are are in an event for the first time, and some for some of them it's their first time on the field in, in a World Cup, and it's it's just hard. I mean it's, it'd be hard to tell a football player not to score a touchdown. I mean it's 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 tough. How Can you, you match Jennifer Jennifer grow since last year? Um, her confidence, her confidence level in interacting with the players. I mean, that's, that's one of the neat things about it. I mean, when she first got here, she was a little bit passive, um, and, and I've talked with her about it. I've talked with Sam Rappaport from the league that heads up the, 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 um, the, uh, the, the equity program. And, you know, we've tried to, you know, get her to do it. Uh, she had an opportunity to coach in the old AAF, uh, which she did with Arizona, and, and she did an excellent job there from what I've told. Um, gave us an opportunity to bring her back and, and have her part of our, of our program. You know, as we go into uh, to, through mini camps, she started with us from the beginning of mini camps and OTAs. Uh, she'll be with us during training camp as well. Coach, you drafted a, a pass rusher in the first round and then a pass protector in the second round. Mm -hmm. What have you seen in the matchups that they've had early in camp? Thus far? Well, I've seen a lot of good and a lot of bad on both sides, um, you know, because uh, they're getting the best of each other. I mean, these are guys that have probably competed against each other or would like to compete against each other. They will compete against each other a lot. Uh, and they're going to grow. They're going to grow together. I mean, anytime you take guys in the first and second round, you hope that they're together for a while. Um, and I think that's one of the nice things is because they both have unique abilities and talents. You know, Brian's got, you know, arguably the, the best get off coming out, out of the draft from what I understand. Uh, Greg Little is one, one of the more athletic left tackles in this league, so it's kind of interesting to watch those guys compete and play against each other. Ron, you mentioned Greg's athleticism. It seems like to some extent Taylor is sort of taking him under his wing, even though he's not that much older than him. Have you seen that relationship sort of start to Well, change? not just Taylor, but I've seen a lot of the veteran uh, offensive linemen. You know, Trey has been terrific with a lot of these young guys. Daryl Williams has done a nice job. And, you know, Taylor, <laughs> having gone through most recently, um, you know, the uh, – uh, the wrath of Coach Matsko. Um, I, I think it's been it's been it's been really good for you know them to put their arm around. So hey, look, it's going to get better. He just coach is just trying to push it because he wants the best from you, which I truly appreciate because Coach Matsko will push him to his limit. We'll will help him to find out just how good he can be in this league. Coach, uh, a lot uh, of talks been surrounded. Uh, you know, obviously Cam and the addition of Greer and where Cal Allen fits, but. What has Taylor Heineke shown as in his second year? Oh, that he belongs. I mean, he's 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 had a terrific OTAs in camp. He really has, and you know, unfortunately, if if people aren't careful, you know, we're going to overlook him, and we can't we can't afford to do that. We've got you've got you know uh, we've got our starter obviously in camp. We've got three good young quarterbacks, um, you know, that that guys that we have to truly watch, and we're going to vet these guys out. I mean, at the end of the day, that we're going to keep the best football players that help us and give us a chance to win. How does his arm look following that? It was a tricep injury. Yeah, but it, it, I believe it was on his other side. So, you know, but he's, he's got strength back. His mobility's there. Um, and, and you watch his movement and his skill set. You, you're really pleased. I mean, he really has had some really good days. So, uh, like I said, it's going to be a heck of a competition. Ron, I, I didn't see Jermaine Carter Jr. out here again. Is he working through an injury? Uh, JC is, is inside. He's accounted for. And, uh, you know, he'll be, at, uh, he'll be at all the meetings. Ron, how eager do you see? You got Christian running back. But beyond him, 
Uh, how are you going to see how all that shakes out? What, what do you feel like you got there? Well, I think we've got a good mix is what we really do have, to be honest with you. We, we drafted a couple of young guys that have tremendous ability and potential. Um, they're going to have to grow into the position. We, we've got you know, Cameron R. Spain is kind of still a little bit unproven, but we know he's capable of. We've seen it. We've seen it in the preseason. We've seen it in some regular games. So he does have the ability to step in if, if, if need be. Uh, and, and we got Reggie Bonifant is a bit of an unknown, but Reggie's a, a, a terrific athlete, great set of hands. Uh, he's a little bit of a threat out of the backfield, uh, which I think is his strength. Um, and, 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 you know, Elijah Hood, we really don't know a lot about. A guy that was having a really good camp last year until he hurt himself unfortunately, and uh, he'll have to work himself back into shape. But I think that, that's a good, solid, young group and you know, a little inexperienced, but there is some talent there. Ron, I know we ask you a lot about uh, just the, how enthusiastic you are about having, you know, year over year, some consistency in the secondary. But I think we sometimes forget James has also been through this un upheaval. What has he shown you through all of these kind of roller coasters? You know, that, that he's steady. He, he comes to work. He works hard. He does the things that he needs to do to improve, and that's one of the things I really am, am impressed with is just how resilient he is. He just continually comes back. He works, doesn't say much, um, but, again, he's just a guy that's been there and he's been very consistent for us. He he's, was telling us he'd like to get a few more interceptions. Is there a fine line, though, with a guy like that who's been consistent that you don't really necessarily want him to become a risk-taker? Well, I don't know if necessarily you could call it a risk-taker as much as he's put himself in position. He's just going to go out and make the plays, and I know he's working to do that. I mean, it, 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 there is a little special skill to being able to, 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 to locate the ball and then attack it and go and make the play. And, you know, he plays with, 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 with such physicality, I think, that sometimes he puts himself out of position to make those plays. Because if you really watch him, he's a very physical player who's done a nice job for us matching up against the other physical receivers in this league. And he's going to be pressing more a little bit this year, he said, because he loves to be so physical. Yes, and then and that's we want to take advantage of some of his skill sets. And one of his is he's got good, quick feet, but he's got really strong hands. And so we need to, we need to exploit that a little bit more. Heard a story back when he was being uh, kind of – recruited out for the draft and scouted that he actually left some bruises on Steve Wilkes. Yes, he did. He, you know, he, one of the things you know the coaches like to do is get up and, and kind of feel the guy's strength and power. And Steve was, you know, mimicking the receiver and and, and um, we got it on tape. And it, it's it's actually it's, it's it's pretty stout. And and that's when you knew that that, that he had you know a really uh, real strong base when he when he jams guys. Ron, so I, I know you mentioned Curtis Samuel yesterday standing out a little bit, but what has been the most impressive part about his game? I, ju I just think his overall game has improved. I mean, you know, he's always fast and quick, but but it's 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 learning and understanding how to get in and out of breaks and, and how to snap out of that break with your hands, presenting a good target. His catch radius, I think, has improved too. You've seen him make a couple of big catches, you know, lunging after the football. So I think that's one of the other pluses that you see. Ron, we've seen one? a couple of pretty impressive plays from Dante Jackson. We know he's fast, but how have you seen him? I guess learn how to use that speed more strategically. Well, the thing that we don't want him to do is use that speed, you know, the wrong way. Um, and like you said, I think strategically is a good way to put it because again, it's not just about trying to bait a guy into throwing the ball, but making sure you're in position that when you do have to hit it, you can go get it. And and, and you see that a little bit more. He's, you know, earlier you've seen me kind of he'd slough off a little bit. He tried to burst in and make that play. And, you know, that puts yourself in peril. But if you put yourself in the right position and you and you give yourself that just that strategic opportunity to make the play, you see a little bit more of that right now. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of happy about that. Is that basically what we saw in that, that tip yes, through? With a little bit more right there. You saw that. He, he, he kind of timed that out, but he was, he was in a position where he was over the top and made the move underneath it very nicely. So, again, you start to see him understanding it's not always about trying to bait a guy and put yourself out of position, but you can bait a guy and be in position. Uh, how big a priority to try to get James uh, – Extended before the season. Oh, I, that's that's a little bit above me. You'd have to ask Marty that question. But clearly, he's a good guy. He is a guy. That, he is a guy that I hope that we do keep around. Though, that he is he is important. What we've we've done, and you know, we, we've kind of shown you know that, that you've got to be able to keep that type of a corner around. Coach, it seems like a lot of Josh. Seems like a lot of maintenance days for guys like Trey Turner and Harris as they kind of come through their rehab. How how do you kind of look at the spring versus once you go into training camp? want to have those guys ready. Absolutely. I mean, that, and that's a big reason why you've seen a lot of those maintenance days. I mean, those guys are doing a lot of the, the, the basic stuff early on to work on their base fundamentals, their techniques, their skill sets. Um, and then, you know, we pull them off because, again, they're, they're, they're still working through, you know, making sure that, that, you know, they're healthy. Because the key to us really is now, once we get the training camp, you know, that the group that, that, that we're going to rely on, count on for the most part, are getting their reps. They are being prepared. And they are getting ready to go into the regular season. 
Um, this really was about a group of young guys that we're going to be counting on to fill some key backup positions. Hopefully we don't have to play these guys a lot. We can rely on those, on those veteran guys.